Welcome to Linked Data Engineering. This is lecture number 5, Linked Data Mashups and Applications. Up to now you have seen how to publish linked data, how to program with linked data and how to visualize linked data. Now in the last section of this lecture we want to do a little data analytics based on linked data. Okay. We start again with the same picture that you have already seen in the last part of this uh, lecture. So this is this famous infographic of the Napoleonic Wars made by Charles Joseph Minard, which tries to analyze what was going on, what was the reason why Napoleon failed to conquer Russia, why his Russian campaign was doomed to fail. And the way how to do this was, of course, to analyze the data that was available, which means the number of soldiers at each point of the campaign, at each point in time, then the temperature, for example, uh, then the geographic coordinates, and then, of course, um, the, the, the coordinates of the towns and the places where battles took place and stuff like that. And this, of course, you can visualize in a setting here, it's a geographic setting, and then you can make sense out of it. But to do this, to make these sophisticated infographics, first you have to analyze the data, you have to understand the data, then you can of course make use of both things, of the visualization and further analysis techniques to help each other, which means I visualize the data, I come up with a new idea, then I analyze the data in a different way and then I do a new visualization to understand even more or to get new insights. And this process is also called data analytics or visual, visual analytics. First we start with simple data analysis, which is a fundamental iterative process. It means first we formulate and execute some kind of a query over the data and then we do a data analysis of the results and then of course we do consecutive queries based on the achieved results to get further and new insights. So this is a constant iterative process. The goals of this approach are usually we want to maximize our understanding of the analyzed data and finally we want to uncover hidden structures and patterns. So this is then so-called data mining process and we want to extract for example important variables, we want to detect anomalies and outliers in the data, we want to test our hypothesis whether they are false or wrong, whether they can be supported by the data or not and we want to develop a simple model to understand what is going on in that data, what is the reason why the data is like it is. And if you emphasize this project uh, or process with the help of visualizations you end up with a process which is called visual analytics where you start again with the data, you do automated analysis of the data and you visualize your results and based on that you gain new insights and knowledge which again maybe lead to a transformation of the data, a new analysis and a new visualization which again leads to new and further insights. So this is visual analytics. How can we do this with linked data? At least first the data analysis process. Of course our data playground again will be DBpedia with the Sparkle endpoint we have. Sparkle already gives us a powerful tool for data analysis as we see here. And then we do Sparkle queries and to do further analysis on the received data, on the resulting data from Sparkle, we can make use of some statistic tools that are available. In the last part of the lecture we have simply seen how to visualize the data, for example with a map chart that we used, but we can also make statistical analysis. And one of the most prominent and freely available tools out there is the system called R. That's a very famous statistic tool, it's uh, openly available, you can download it here for several operating systems and you will see how we will use this in exactly or for this data analysis task for linked data. Okay, linked data analytics. Of course, we first try with an example from DBpedia. And our playground example should be how do I determine the importance of an entity within the linked data graph. And we want to do this then of course with some specific entities. First of all, so how do I determine the importance of an entity? When is an entity important? You know, DBpedia 
is of course a derivative of Wikipedia. If a Wikipedia article is important, what do the other articles do? They refer to that article and say, yeah, and there is an important connection to this article because, which means the so-called link popularity, this is the so-called in degree, how many other articles are referencing this article, they determine about the popularity and the importance of this article, which again in DBpedia reflects an entity. Wikipedia page reflects a DBpedia entity. So we could use the so-called in degree from the graph structure of DBpedia, which is a simple measure for link popularity. And this can be, of course, computed with Sparkle by simply counting how many articles point to this entity or how many entities point to that entity, have a link to that entity. This, of course, gives a number. The higher the number, the higher the in degree, the more important the entity. But of course, to um, compute this on the fly, it always requires lots of time. And of course, Sparkle queries at all take a long time. So we probably can use some pre-computation process to support this. And some people has done that. And they did this not only with the in degree, but if you remember, for example, web pages, the importance of a web page can be measured by the so-called page rank. This is a measure that is used by search engines, most prominent by the Google search engine, to determine the importance of a web page. And this page rank measure, of course, can also be used for DBpedia because it's a graph. And of course, if many other uh, entities point to exactly this entity, you will end up with um, a popularity score which can be measured by a page rank. And some people here from KIT in Karlsruhe, they made exactly this computation, this page rank computation for each single entity in DBpedia and it's available over there. So there is another graph um, which uh, is available at the public DBpedia Sparkle endpoint and I will show you how to access this. So this is quite simple. This would be our query and our first example is we want to analyze the importance of authors. So first let's have a look at the query that we use here. So to get the page rank we use a specific graph which has here a, a specific prefix. This is vrank and we say the vrank prefix is here at perl.org vocabulary vrank and then this hash sign. So this is the um, namespace prefix for our page rank. And this is called here vrank. Okay, so we select here simply authors and the rank and we say okay, we select first from dbpedia.org there is, of course, the author information. And here, that's the other graph that we have to use. That's people, AIFB, KIT, blah, 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 at DBpedia page rank. And this, of course, is um, important for, or, or there is the page rank data stored. And it's available as a separate graph within the public DBpedia endpoint. OK, then we say here, OK, author must be of type writer. And then we say here, vrank has rank the V rank value and this should be then the rank. So this is the property that you have to use here. Simply copy it, use it. If you are interested how these things work, look at the web page that was given on the previous page on the slide. Simply take into account exactly this property will deliver you the page rank, but for this you have directly access this graph or you have also to give this graph. I have here specified these two graphs as <coughs> default graphs. So it's the most simple way. And then of course I want to order this according to the achieved rank in a descending order. So the largest rank first. Okay. If we do this, we will end up in a list which looks like that. So we can you try out the Sparkle query for ourselves. So here we have the query as you've seen just now and I simply do this and then you see okay we get a list ordered by rank for the authors and as you see here it's a rather long list so we go back to the top. On the top here in dbpedia the most important author no wonder it's William Shakespeare followed by Charles Dickens then there comes a German one Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and then comes ah no wonder J.R.R. 
Tolkien. Yeah, so you see here, that's the list of important authors. But the point is, this is really a long list. So are there many authors which have a high rank? So what's the average rank? So what rank do most authors have? So how is this value of rank distributed? Interesting question. You cannot find it out because there are thousands of authors in here. So it's difficult to do this manually. So therefore we will use a statistic package, R, to help us with exactly this task. Okay, back to the presentation and we see here what's next. Of course we have to download exactly this list of results to um, a local file called authors.csv and of course um, just do this without the author names because we simply want to take care of the rank here. Okay, I assume now that you do this and I won't do it again but I will show you what I will do with the achieved results because I have here a list of authors. So I have here authors.csv. I have saved this from my Sparkle query and you see here that's the column rank. And here are all the ranks that we have seen just before. So if you want to know how many authors are in there, it's quite simple. You can use again here a Unix command line tool, word count. I simply count the lines of authors csv and you see there are 10,000 authors in it so 10,001 that's quite a lot okay so now let's start with our analysis with the r package so we do this again i will show it first here on the terminal then we go back to the presentation for R you have to download this R and then simply you type R and you start this R engine. And what we do first is, of course, we have the data here in authors.csv. We want to load this data to work with it. And we load it in a local array and I call this also authors. And I read a CSV file because it's CSV and then I give the file name in double quotes is authors.csv and I also want to take the header you remember that the header name was their rank I also want to use this so I say header equals true I take the header I read this and what I can do now is now I have read all these 10,000 single data items into this array and I can say give me a summary of exactly this data represented by authors. Uh, I've written it in the wrong way. That's it. A bit down and you see here though that's interesting. Summary author means I have lots of data. This is the minimum rank 0 0.5. This is the maximum rank 376 point something. This is the mean, 2.74408. Then the mean means I simply sum up all the ranks and then I divide it by the number of entries. And this is the medium, which means if I have 10,000 ordered entries, this will be at number 5,000, right in the middle. There is 1.133. And then I have two other statistical methods, which means the first quantile and the third quantile, and we will have a look in the presentation what exactly this means. Okay, back to the presentation. So here I did exactly the same, so you can try this at home. I read in the authors table and I did my summary here. And to make further analysis of that, I can do a so-called box plot. So then I can see graphically what this data means. I can show you. We go whoops, to our terminal window and we simply say box plot authors. And you will see here again. Yeah, it's rather small a box plot of all the values. But the point is, as you see here, you see here a small structure and then you see here all the plots 
till the largest. So the largest one is 376. So I mean, probably these are all out outliers. So I will somehow scale this thing to another scale. So I say here, I scale the y-axis, y lim equals c, and I say the range should be from zero to, yeah, let's say 10, that's quite small. And then I look at my graphics again, you see it here. Now you see it better. Now you see here, this point is the mean. This here is the first quartile, the third quartile, which means in here is 50% of all the data. And these are the so-called whiskers, which means again, I add again 50% to the first and the third quantile. And then I will end up here and here. And this means this is 75% of all the data. So this is the majority of all the data. And everything which is outside there are so-called outliers. So this would be a further means to visually uh, analyze this data. So let's look it up again here in the presentation. So what you see here is again this box plot. So I have here adapted the scale from 100 to 20 to 10. Here, see it a bit better. And what you see here, so this is the median right in the middle. This is the first quantile and the third quantile. These are the so-called whiskers. So they are, if you have the quartile range, you do it by, uh, you multiply it or increase it by 50%. So this is then the so-called whiskers of this distribution. And then here you have all the outliers that are above here. So this would be the first step to the analysis of this data. Okay, let's make our quest a bit more complicated. We include to the rank that we already have also the number of books that each of these authors has written. Why are we doing this? Possibly we might have the hypothesis that the more important an author is, the more books he might have written. And we want to prove whether this might be true or wrong or whether this hypothesis can be somehow supported by the data we have. Okay, so first thing we have to do is for each of the authors, we also have to include the numbers of books that these authors have authored. So let's have first a look at our Sparkle query here. So what are we doing? So what we are doing here is we are selecting, of course, authors again. And of course, we need some rank. And we also need books, and these books have to be counted. Let's have a look first inside the query. So author must be of type writer. This is then, again, the rank of the author. This is all the same. And then we say, OK, start with a book. And the book has an author, and the author should be the, our author, of course. So this is then book, author, author. And what I want to do here is I do not want to have the title of all the books. I simply want to count all the books. So I group this by author. So therefore here we have author and group by author. And then I say, okay, from the rank, I simply, because all the rank of all the authors for one single, for, for, for one author are always the same. So therefore I take a sample here of rank. So I only need one value. And I call this then a rank, this variable, which is the author rank. And the second one, I want to count all the books. So count book. And I call this variable book count or b count. And then I order everything in descending order according to the rank, right just before. And what I will get in the end is a list like that. So we can also make this Quarkle query by our own. You see here the query again, like I told you, and I say run query. And this is then the query again, William Shakespeare is on the top. And let's have a look at the data first manually, of course, and we see, okay, there are 23 books, according to DBpedia, which are authored by Shakespeare. Then the next one is Dickens. Dickens has 41 books, even more. That's great. Then we have Goethe, only seven books for him. Then Tolkien, 31 books. Wow, I didn't know that Tolkien really authored so many books or stories. Yeah, then comes Plutarch, which seems to be an important author, but 
who has only one publication there, only one book. So you see, simply by looking at the data, it's quite difficult to make sense out of it and to see whether there is a relation or a correlation between the number of books that have been uh, written by the author and the rank of the author. So therefore, again, we need our statistical tool. For this, of course, just um, save this, the result of this query as CSV file. Of course, leave out, for example, the author. So the URI, only take the numbers A rank and B count, save it to your local computer and then we can analyze it again in the R system. So this is what we want to do next here. So we simply do this here and what we do here is, you see here, I have another list author too. I will read it in and then I do the summary and then I will see first the summary of these two um, different data rows that I have in my data sample. Okay, let's do this again. So first I clear this. Now I must get out of R again. You see here I have here authors too. Let's have a look at that. And you see we have here A rank, that's the first one, that's the page rank. Then there's a comma, comma, and then comes the B count, which is the book count. So it's exactly what we've seen before. Okay, now I start again my R system. And now I assign to authors2 the file read.csv authors2.csv and I also include the headers. So header equals true and I say summary. And of course I have to give authors two to make the summary. Okay. And you see here um, the two distributions are a bit different. So the mean for the, the rank it's three point something, for the book count it's four point something. So most authors have written four books. So that's the average, it's interesting. Um, minimum it's one, of course, if they have written zero books, it does not make sense. And oh, we have an author who has 206 books or 206 stories, which he has authored quite a lot. And we also see here the distribution between the first and third quartile. And of course, we are interested in to look at it um, in a graphical way. So we make box plot authors two. Then we get here the according box plot. They are quite a bit different. And again, we see here, no, we have to scale it again. So we scale it y limit equals c and we do it from 0 to 10 again to see how it looks and what you see here. Yeah, so these distributions look a bit different if you look closer at it. So there seem to be less outliers here for the books, at least in that range. So this is the book count. This is the page rank. So you see here also the range from the first quartile to the third quartile is much larger. So the whiskers also are down here at one book because there seem to be many authors who have only written one book. And then here we have uh, the whiskers, the upper whiskers. So this is a larger range that is covered here. So this is first quite interesting. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. If you want, for example, then in this two-dimensional or two-column data, only want to uh, have a look at one single column, it's also possible you do then simply box plot on authors two and then you say dollar sign and then B count. This is the name of the header of that row. And then of course you can only display here the graphics for the book count. Okay. Now we see this and now we try to make sense. Somehow we ask, okay, have important authors potentially written many books? 
we could try to do the following. We could try to draw in a diagram on the x-axis the rank of the author and on the y-axis the number of books this author has written and then see whether we will find a correlation. So let's do this for example here again with our R tool. So here we have to say simply plot and then I have to say authors 2 and first I take here A rank which is the rank of the author and a second dimension I take authors 2 and then I take the book count and I see that I have made again a mistake here it must be authors not author so and you see here is my graphics I have to enlarge it a bit and you see here okay large distribution interesting to see but there, if there would be a direct correlation you would see here somewhere a uh, line here for example here in the diagonal or any other line so here you see yeah there are some with high rank but with only very few books there are also some people with few books but with a high rank uh, other way around with a low rank but with many books Okay, so you see here sometimes you cannot really make sense of the data in that way, it's quite difficult. If you know a bit of statistics, um, sometimes you can't see exactly in a visualized way uh, whether there is a correlation or not, but there are statistical means or procedures. You can, for example, compute, compute the so-called correlation coefficient. And if there is a correlation, then the, co the correlation uh, coefficient is positive. So for example, you can say here, I use the two variables again and I want to see whether between both the correlation and you see here the correlation coefficient is 0 0.35 which means there is a weak correlation exactly between the importance of an author and the number of books he has written. At least it's positive. So it would be perfect if it would be 1. There would be no correlation if it would be 0. So it's a rather low correlation that is given here. Another thing that you can try out also with the R packages, for example, you can ask um, how are importance and number of books distributed. For this you can do so-called, you can plot histograms. And what I did here first, I plotted the histogram with the uh, with a, with a histogram, uh, um, how is it called? Yeah, you type in HIST, which is then the histogram, and then in uh, parentheses you state the name of the column of your data that you want to choose. Here it's the author rank, and you see here then in the histogram that there are many, many, many authors which have a role low rank. And there are only a few which have a higher rank. So this usually is the so-called power law distribution, which is quite natural. There are many with low and only a few with high of something. So this is a natural distribu distribution. And you can ask the same again also for uh, here the authors and the books. And this is the number of books distributions. Also you see here the frequency in this histogram on the y-axis and you see here the number of books they have been authored on the x-axis. And there are lots of authors which have authored only a rather small number of books and only a few authors who have authored then more books. So this also would be another visualization which gives you more insight into the data that is represented here in Wikipedia or in DBpedia. So you see with the help of Sparkle first for pre-processing the data and then of course using a statistic tool like R you will be able to do further data analysis and to gain more insight and also to come up with previously hidden information to find patterns and stuff like that. So as a summary, 
Linked data analytics, as we know, is an iterative and exploratory process. So we do this step by step and gain more insight. And for this visualization is a very important tool because then we can see also these relations. In the end, data analysis enables you to discover previously unknown relations. And this then ends up in something which is called data mining or also knowledge mining. And this is what we have done here. And this also concludes this part of the lecture. Okay, so we have done lots of interesting applications, linked data mashups, linked data publication, linked data programming and stuff like that, including visualiza visualization and data analytics. And in the next lecture, we will do even more advanced linked data-based applications, such as, for example, we have already referred to it in this lecture, for example, named entity linking, how to analyze text and to assign to text representation certain entities from a knowledge base. This can be done in an automated way. We will show you how this works. So stay tuned for the next lecture.